What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. So today, I'm actually going to be doing almost like a continuation of the Sil Valley video. My entire channel has been me just using some, you know, wacky Pokemon or just making use of Pokemon that other people don't really see much viability in. But uh, I figured I might as well make a series where I'm not, you know, just building around them, but just discussing potential I see in other Pokemon within the format. Today, I want to talk about Mandibuzz, and I think this is actually a Pokemon that a lot of people are just sort of overlooking when you really shouldn't. This thing's got a lot of insane tools that make it specifically useful in this format. So we're going to get into that. So if you enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer my comment question of the day, how would you use Mandibuzz, and what Pokemon do you believe is severely overlooked in the format? Let me know. Well, let's get into it. Also. Join the Discord if you want to, and tonight I'm going to be going live using subscriber teams on my Twitch channel. But let's start off with uh, two sets I have for it, and I'm going to describe why Mandibuzz is useful as well, uh, and then I'll get into this notable moves thing. Yeah, so Mandibuzz is a really interesting Pokemon. Let's just like look over it in general right now. It's got three abilities. It's got Big Pex, Overcoat, and Weak Armor. And yes, Weak Armor could be interesting because you could do something like Weak Armor, Weakness Policy, Lash Out, right? But that's not what we're looking at today. That is not what we're looking at today. Even though that that combo does insane damage, I used it in Draft League. We're looking at Overcoat in particular. Why is Overcoat useful? Well, Overcoat makes it so Mandibuzz completely ignores powder moves like Rage Powder, like Sleep Powder, and probably most importantly like Spore. Maybe Sleep Powder is a little bit more important considering the viability of Sunroom. So, with a Pokemon like this, you would expect it to be, you know, pretty bulky as well, and that's exactly what you get, but you also get a decent amount of speed, and that speed tier is kind of insane when you take into account the fact that it gets Tailwind. So, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, this bulk is really, really good. 110 HP, 105 defense, and 95 special defense. With the right EVs, you can live pretty much any move once. Now, we're going to be taking advantage of these four stats. It's HP, it's defense, it's special defense, and it's speed. It's offenses are pretty much, you know, those, those are off to the side. Those might come in handy at some point, but the fact that this thing is a dark type with foul play means that most of its offensive potential is going to be just turning around the opponent's attack stat on themselves. So yeah, let's get into my first move set I have here. Uh, we have Mandibuzz with Leftovers, Overcoat, Taunt, Foul Play, Snarl, and Roost. 252 HP, 60 Defense, 196 Special Defense. Now, Mandibuzz is actually a very solid Pokemon overall, uh, because this specific EV spread, I didn't put any speed into it, uh, however, this specific EV spread, without any boosts or anything, you're going to be able to naturally take a Timid Max Special Attack Regieleki Thunderbolt, and that's with Magnet. It's holding a Magnet. Now, why is that important? Well, Regieleki is one of the most common Pokemon in the format, and one of few Pokemon that actually somewhat scare Mandibuzz. Now, if we look at every Pokemon in the format, we can actually just look at what Mandibuzz's matchup is like. Incineroar, pretty even. Mandibuzz just, you know, it gets walled out by Incineroar, but it doesn't really get defeated by Incineroar, granted you have Roost. Tapu Fini, somewhat of a losing matchup as long as you're not running Snarl. Landorus, I would call that a winning matchup. It's very physically defensive, and you're going to be able to turn around its attack stat on it with Foul Play, and wall it out with Roost. Regieleki, losing matchup, however, it's, you know, you're going to be able to live the hit anyways and do whatever it needs to. Rillaboom, absolute win matchup. Porygon 2, you're going to be able to taunt that thing. Urshifu, you completely wall that thing out. Grimmsnarl, a bit of a losing matchup. Glacier, a bit of a losing matchup. You wall out Urshifu, Rapid Strike. You annihilate Spectre, you annihilate Dragapult. To an extent, you can wall out a Celesteela. You don't get put to sleep by Venusaur. You can snarl a Torkoal to death. You wall out Moltres Galar with Snarl. Metagross, you can probably one-shot with a Foul Play if it has a Weakness Policy Boost. Thunderous, yes, it can do a lot of damage to you, but you're still going to be able to, bow to Foul Play it. From then on, it's pretty much just the same deal. There are going to be a couple of Pokemon that beat it, but for the most part, Mandibuzz can, at minimum, eat a hit from something and hit it back. And that's kind of huge in this format considering we have Dynamax to account for. So, what does this spread do? Like I said, it's going to be able to take that hit from the Regieleki with a Timid Magnet Thunderbolt. Uh, and that will allow you to go for a Snarl against the team, or Foul Play, or Taunt, whatever you need to. Let's say they're leading off with a Regieleki and a Dusclops. And the only reason they're leading off Regieleki is to scare off your Mandibuzz lead. Well, regardless of the fact that they're leading off with that thing, you're going to be able to Taunt that, that Dusclops and stop the Trick Room. 
If they're leading off with a Tapu Fini and a Dusclops or anything that wants to set up Trick Room, you can taunt it. You can stop setup, you can do whatever you need to. If they lead off with a Tapu Fini or any kind of special attacker, this thing's pretty specially defensive. You're going to be able to snarl that thing and wall it out with Roost. Now, you aren't actually outspeeding Tapu Fini, which is kind of key for uh, beating it when it comes to roosting. However, that was just, you know, I wanted to put some defense in there. The defense is completely dumped, but if you want to outspeed a Tapu Fini, it doesn't take too much. If we look at Tapu Fini, you know, usually they don't run too much speed. Let's just assume it's like a, you know, base speed Tapu Fini. We can get this thing up to 106 pretty easily and then put the rest into defense. And we actually do that with the next set. The next set actually takes advantage of a Tapu Fini with a partner. And I believe this is actually a better set than the original. So, Seed Tailwind. Misty Seed will actually boost this thing's special defense up by one stage, making it absurdly bulky. At this point, this thing is actually calced to live a timid magnet Regieleki's max lightning. You're going to be able to eat that, and that's with less investment overall. This is 196 calm, this is actually 156 calm. Now, because of that, you're able to not only put more speed in this thing, but more defense. And this speed is key for using it effectively. We're running a Tailwind set, meaning that turn one, you're going to be able to Tailwind on whatever you need to. And at plus two, you're going to be outspeeding a Dragapult. Dragapult does not enjoy taking a foul play from Stab, uh, from Stab Mandibuzz. And, you know, you're already setting up a Tailwind. Let's say you lead off uh, Mandibuzz plus Tapu Fini. You can Tailwind up, and then your Tapu Fini at the same time is going to be threatening any Dragon type on the field. While also dealing with Incineroar, because Incineroar was one of the few things that walls out uh, Mandibuzz. You're going to be able to hit that thing with a water type move. So I think Mandibuzz Tapu Fini in particular is a very nice combo that we should be taking advantage of here. Once again, you're going to be able to taunt whatever might want to go for a Trick Room on your Tailwind, and you have Roost to just sort of stall everything out. And something I, I want to note, um, most things that are clicking taunt in this format that aren't named Incineroar are actually prankster Pokemon. You're going to see Thunderous, you're going to see uh, Whimsicott. If they don't want you to set up a Trick Room, there's very little they can do versus you because these prankster taunt moves, you're completely immune to. Mandibuzz is completely immune to prankster taunt. It's completely immune to any prankster move. So, you know, uh, you won't be able to get, I don't know, Thunder Waved by a Grim Snarl or uh, Taunted by a Grim Snarl or Scary Faced by a Grim Snarl. None of that's going to affect the Tapu Fini, which is really, really nice. And even if Grim Snarl was on the field, you can pair this thing up. Or no, that's going to affect Mandibuzz, but uh, you can pair this thing up with the Tapu Fini. And once again, Tapu Fini covers this thing's weakness really, really well. Water Fairy covers a lot of the things that Mandibuzz doesn't want to deal with. Even Landorus, if it's running a rock move and can, you know, destroy your Mandibuzz in two or three hits, uh, the Tapu Fini can Dynamax and deal with that. So I think these two are going to be really solid and I intend on building around them soon. So next up, I want to go over a couple of notable moves. I want to just, you know, dive into the moveset real quick. Mandibuzz's move pool is actually pretty shallow, but the way that they made this Pokemon is kind of interesting because they pretty much only gave it moves that it needs. So, Knock Off is an interesting option because it will allow you to better deal with things like Dusclops, Porygon 2, or even, rem even remove things like Safety Goggles for later on in the match, remove leftovers from bulkier Pokemon. Basically, just removing items is a really big deal in this metagame. You could even knock off like an Assault Vest from, I don't know, uh, of Metagross. If you're facing a non-weakness a, a non policy Metagross, they're, you know, usually Assault Vest, and you can knock that off. U-Turn is really nice in case you're not running a Misty Seed set. You can actually run something along the lines of, like, Taunt, U-Turn, Foul Play, and Roost, and that will allow you to lead off with Mandibuzz, and if you end up seeing something that isn't ideal, you know, you can fake out that Pokemon with, like, a partner Incineroar or whatever you've got there, and you turn out. It'll allow you to build a little bit, mo a little bit more momentum. And I could even see, like, Tailwind U-Turn being useful, because you can Tailwind up and get out of there immediately for something else to hit the field and be more threatening. Fake Tears is interesting, and I would say if you're running Fake Tears, you're going to want to run that on a Tailwind set just to ensure that Mandibuzz is actually going to be able to outspeed the opponent, and then you can hit it with something pretty powerful. Maybe you can speed creep the uh, Mandibuzz to be just barely faster than your Tapu Fini, and you can do something along the lines of, you know, Tailwind into Fake Tears Moonblast, or even you could run this thing with a Psychic Seed. We might see, you know, Tapu Lele come back, or even an Ndidi, and you can run like Tailwind into, um, <laughs> I don't know expanding force whatever you're running next to it with a psychic move just hit it with that dual wing beat is just a flying stab move like i said this thing it's not meant to be offensive really it has some options for being offensive you can run dual wing beat you can run heat wave you can run brave bird but it isn't what this thing wants to do beyond that there isn't too much i think protect might be useful in a few sets but just the general bulk of this thing makes it hard to justify running protect when you can run a bunch of utility moves and roost to make sure you don't go down and one that I was, you know, 
you know, I wasn't going to mention at first, but I have used effectively on some Pokemon, is Pluck. Pluck is something that I used on like a really dumb stall Altaria team a few uh, seasons ago. Uh, because a lot of Pokemon run Pinch Berries, Tapu Fini run Berries, Incineroar run Berries, a lot of Pokemon like to run Berries, and just being able to pluck those Berries off of them and healing your Mandibuzz up is kind of cool. So yeah, this was a bit of a shorter video, but I just wanted to go in depth as to why I think Mandibuzz is really solid. When you look at what's in this metagame, Yes, there are Mandibuzz answers, like there's definitely going to be someone in the comments section that says Mandibuzz exists, Nihilo go haha, Meteor Beam go brr, but that's with every Pokemon. You could say that about Incineroar, Incineroar gets annihilated by a Meteor Beam. Uh, Mandibuzz just having all these tools and such a great ability and just the kit that it has, it's insane it hasn't gone, you know, it hasn't seen much usage in this format. If we look at it, if we look at Mandibuzz usage... Mandibuzz is at 0.004% or 0.04% usage. That's way too low for what this is. Dude, just imagine like hitting a Kartana with a foul play when it like when uh, a Kartana at plus one is not going to KO Mandibuzz given its moveset. You're given its given its pool, right? And then you're just going to be able to foul play it and deal a ton of damage back. That's cool. That is a cool Pokemon. So yeah, I'm going to be trying out Mandibuzz soon. Let me know if you are too. Uh, but that with that out of the way, you know, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.